Hi everyone, welcome to the Overland Expo West 2023 video. I do this video kind of every year to kind of overview uh, some of the things I saw and uh, liked and also kind of just to cover what the uh, expo itself is like and uh, why you should visit. This year's expo seemed to be uh, as big as ever, if not more so. Uh, there's been some new improvements in the area. There was some new pavements and, uh, and nicer setups for the booth areas and stuff like that. This year we had some rain on Friday, kind of like from 11 to maybe 3. Uh, it wasn't that bad. Uh, and then uh, Saturday was really nice, big crowds, and I think Sunday was bringing them in too. I believe there were more vendors than ever this time. Uh, one of the trends I kind of noticed was there was less of the giant semi-type uh, booths that took up the space of like 10 booths. There was a couple, three of them around, but it used to be uh, more, it seemed like. Some of the ones that used to have semis now just had pretty small booths, which made room for other smaller companies, which is what I like. I like to see, you know, the little guy and what the odds and ends that they have, that the widget that they came up with, and, and that's uh, pretty helpful. In this video, I'll show you around and then uh, show you some of the interesting things that I saw and uh, thought were uh, really worth highlighting. This is Kyle with Lone Peaks. He's gonna tell us a little bit about the campers it makes. How's it going guys? We have the Lone Peak camper here. Uh, so what makes this thing unique is the overall length of it. It's 10 feet long. It includes a four inch thick, 80 inch long mattress. And with that long length, we basically get a giant pass-through space inside of the camper. So if you look inside, this is standard on all models. So the whole goal with this thing I don't know if you guys have heard my story, but my rooftop tent got stolen. Somebody took a Sawzall to my rack, uh, stole my rooftop tent. So when I started thinking about the next system I wanted to build out, one of the big things is I wanted to have a lot of room inside. And so that drove the design of having a giant passage space, the design for this rear overhang, which creates a ton of interior volume. It's also a rain guard. So yesterday it was, it was dumping out here and we were cozy inside and had the back window open so we could actually have airflow and see outside. So that's kind of the cool thing about the camper. And then we also have a ton of different accessories. Uh, we have storage accessories. This is called a gear vault. We have gear bags on the side. I got a bunch of my recovery gear here. Uh, we have electronics accessories we're coming out with, including something called the power plate, which is back here. So it combines an inverter, a DC to DC charger that includes an MPPT solar converter. So that's all that to say is that you can charge a battery in the bed of your truck off your alternator or off of solar panels, which I have about 400 watts on the roof charging this battery down here. So this is all built out with a truck vault system. Uh, truck vault is a company over in Western Washington, mainly LDO, um, like law enforcement based products, but they're, they're venturing into more of the overlanding market. And so they make some incredibly high quality products that uh, you can store a firearm in here, you can store a fly fishing pole. Uh, it's been pretty nice. I also use these as a, a bench system basically to live out of. So, if you guys have any questions about the camper, check it out. Uh, website is lonepeakoverland.com. Uh, or just reach out to me personally at Kyle at LoonPeakOverland.com. Believe me, I've been uh, kind of studying the uh, Pop Top Camper world for quite a while. I even have a Facebook group on it. And uh, this is definitely one of the best I've seen, um, especially for the, the wedge style. And uh, Kyle's been gracious enough to give me a code uh, to get you guys uh, $250 off uh, accessories if you were to order one of these. And that code and all that information is in the description of this video. Prices for this quality of camper right now is basically unbeatable. I thought it was kind of interesting that a battery-powered vehicle uh, teamed up with a regular 12-volt battery manufacturer for their booth. It was kind of nice to see the RS1 in uh, full glory. The electric Hummer was back again this year, uh, though they're really not really producing many of these. I think I heard like the first month they sold eight or something like that or produced eight. But it is definitely a different vehicle, heavy as heck, but it's uh, pretty cool looking. And uh, they did have their new, uh, I guess it'd be the Colorado or whatever the GMC version of it was. I use an OVS uh, 270 on it and really love it. And uh, they were showing off a prototype of a pop top camper too as well. That looked kind of interesting. As usual, every shock manufacturer is there with their forests of shocks on display. Goose Gear, uh, as always, has a pretty large booth, and uh, I really like their stuff. It's really well done. It's expensive, um, but it is uh, neat and clean and, and well done. This is the first uh, overlanding setup I've seen of a full-size Grand Wagoneer. It looked kind of interesting, and uh, they had the red tail overland uh, carbon fiber hard-sided um, rooftop tent on there. I think these run up close to 30 grand. 
So uh, really cool setup, but nothing that's uh, really a thrifty overlander style. The auto had some really well done uh, just storage units, uh, kind of like the goose gear stuff, only these guys are uh, all done with aluminum, so they save a lot of space. The Oru pop top is really nice, just a little spendy. Hey guys, I'm Joe with Viado Equipment. I do product development for Viado. Um, I'm here in the Nomad booth today. We're showing off our Viado truck interiors. As you can see here, we have a plate, so we have some modules in the back, um, we have some modules in the front, we have a seat cover, we have hatch access on the top, front and back. You have pull-out drawers that pull out fully here. This one goes to the tailgate, but you do have options to pull them out to the tailgate or to the aisle. Now looking up, we have the Oro Designs Bruin camper. This camper features hard sides. We have windows here, and when we pull it down, it folds into itself and collapses in the front, so you can latch it in the front, and then you latch it in the back. If we go inside, you'll see the bed is stowed right now, but the bed platform will pull out here, and then you would flip the bed over, and you have a full queen size bed up here. Um, the mattress itself is about four to five inches thick. It depends on the model you're ordering, but you do get it with it. The sides are all hard sided in here, so when you have wind, you get way less wind noise, way less buffering. There's no twist to it when it opens. We have honeycomb up top, which makes it lightweight. Our panel down here is the same honeycomb, it makes it lightweight. The system all together with everything you see here probably weighs about 500 pounds at most, but it's a super robust system. And if you have any questions, you should check us out. You can find us at orodesignsusa.com or orodesignsusa on Instagram. And you can find Viado at viadoequipment.com or viadoequipment on Instagram. Seems to be more and more full-size uh, overlanding trucks, including these from Elevated. They are definitely monster trucks with some big tires on them. Not sure why everybody thinks this guy's hard to find. He's just standing there taking pictures. This Fieldcraft uh, Gladiator caught my eyes, a pretty well done setup. Hey guys, uh, Tim from Kakadu here. Really excited to take you through our portable Outback Shower. Um, we're launching the brand this year at Overland Expo West, and um, this is by far and away been one of the most popular little units. So what we see here guys, um, a fully portable, self-contained unit that will take uh, ambient temperature water straight in, heat it up, and spit out hot water in a matter of seconds. So I'm gonna take you through how it works. Two-stage operation, simply hit the power unit, that lights up your LCD display. It'll show you what the inlet temp is of the water, and it'll also show you what's coming out. So when you're ready to go, hit start. You might hear that electric, electronic ignition kicking in. That's powered by the lithium battery. So again, fully portable running off a lithium ion battery. As soon as that's lit, the flame lights up. You can see that indicator there. And you can see, as I turn this dial, that dial will start to crank out hotter water and you'll see how fast that starts to increase. Now the unit's going to do uh, oh, yeah. water anywhere up to 122 sure. degrees Fahrenheit sure. um, and then you've got a, a lot of really clever design features built in here. For example on the shower head if you're using a shower situation and you want to conserve water, jump in, get wet, switch it off. You can soap up, you can do your hair, and then when you're ready to go, rather than jumping out, turning it back on at the unit, you simply turn the shower head back on, and that'll reignite, and your hot water's coming again instantly. You can, you can see out the, out the back here with the propane uh, pound tank, that's going to give you about four hour continuous run time, and with the lithium ion battery on board, you're going to get about two hour continuous run time. Common question is, what happens when I run out of battery? There's a 12 volt DC charger that's included, so you plug it into your power source, direct into your cigarette auxiliary if you like. That'll run the unit, and it'll also charge the battery at the same time. So there's plenty of uh, really easy to use features built inside the unit, and um, quite functional. If it's too hot, you simply turn the dial. That reduces the burner, which ultimately reduces the out output on the water there as well. What's the flow rate? Flow rate on the unit, you're gonna get about uh, half a gallon per minute or in our language, 2.3 litres, <laughs> asterisk. Um, so that's really important to get that balance right. If your flow rate's too high, you mm -hmm. may get 
greater pressure. Yeah. And what's going to happen is you're going to suck your water and, and you're going to actually use your water probably too quickly because not everyone's got a big gallon drum like we do here today. Right. So getting that balance on pressure and consumption is really important. So it's a really simple... Uh, oh, that's the pump. Okay. Pump. Yeah, okay. Yeah, really simple. So you might see here on the camera there's a little gauze filter in here. So, again, not everyone's yeah. got a gallon of full of water. Yeah. If you want to throw it into a river or a creek, you yeah. can do it. We don't recommend you do it all the time because sediment will eventually build up. Um, but this unit here, you know, it's going to operate in full water from any source that you put it in. Unfortunately, this is the only Nissan uh, Overlander I noticed at the show. I wish there was more of them. Toyota released their new Tacomas at the show. I think it was actually the very first day of the international release of that, and uh, they were showing off several of them, and it uh, looks pretty good. There's a lot of improvements, uh, definitely a better vehicle than in the past. There's a lot of in-depth information on other YouTube channels on these trucks, uh, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be big sellers. Expo always has plenty of uh, raffle giveaways. This one was at Dometic slash Forerunner, and they're a lot of big crowd. Last year, our theme was the soft-sided uh, bags, the storage, and this year it seems to be a lot more of the extrusion slash laser and water cut um, type metal pieces to uh, do fittings and throughout the uh, your builds. ton of really sweet builds to look at, kind of like a SEMA setup. I thought this rooftop tent was kind of unique. It kind of takes half the roof rack space, uh, kind of one person wide uh, with a very high top to it. You could really kind of get up on your knees or, or change clothes in this one fairly easy. Only two Mavericks at the show. Uh, this one is pretty well done at Dimebach. They are coming out with some uh, springs and lists for this as well. This is the first year Topo Toppers has been at Expo. They have some uh, pretty good uh, toppers uh, for pretty competitive prices as well. Amber and Justin were back with some Starlink products. So this is a 12 volt Starlink conversion. So it's all in one. It takes a standard Starlink like that. You have a dish and a router separate and it converts it into an all in one package. So this has the router internal. Oh, okay. You just plug it into 12 volts and uh, yeah, you can magnet it on a vehicle. You turn it on and off with a wireless remote. Pretty straightforward, it just shrinks the whole package way, way down so you can, you know, it's not really feasible to haul that around in a truck camper this size. It takes up a whole seat in the truck basically. Right. Uh, versus this, you can put it on the roof and use it in motion and leave it there. You don't have to haul it around. It's always, always mounted. Uh, UniqueComponentry.com or Unique Componentry on Instagram. As usual, there's always some uh, evening activities, a couple of parties that we like to attend and uh, hang out and talk with people. This year there was more camping than ever before. Um, they kind of expanded their camping area, including some closer to the uh, venue itself, and it was still really crowded. Um, you did kind of do, I guess, like, you know, basically say it's festival camping, so, it, you know, you're not all spread out and everything. But it, it works well, and it's fun to walk around, check out the rigs. Uh, and uh, see what everybody else is doing with their uh, setups. Ended up camping near uh, Red Rocks Overland and um, also right by us was Dusty, the vehicle that Tim and uh, Kelsey from uh, Dirt Sunrise uh, used to drive. This year it seemed to be a lot less with YouTubers. Uh, here was Road Chose Me had a booth, but uh, a lot of the other YouTubers uh, were kind of set off to the side and weren't necessarily part of a booth too much. Um, Badass Brunette had her vehicle, uh, just finished it, and that was in a booth, but the rest were kind of off on a uh, kind of an influencer YouTuber area. There was still plenty of the super monster overlander, if you call them that, vehicles. Uh, some are massive uh, and pretty interesting and uh, pretty expensive, but uh, it's something different to see. And as always, there's a lot of uh, classic vehicles uh, to look at. They're kind of different uh, and fun. It's sort of like a SEMA in that way, just to check out some of the different vehicles around.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button and subscribe. We'll see you on the trail.